and yeah. okay, that's it's, it's well, we're well defined. Okay, so the employees is the key. Um, very good. So, uh, any comments? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Abstain. So it passes uh, four zero one. Now, I could either call Mr. Formica back in or I could control the whole situation. If you can get, get us out of here, yeah. yeah. All right. So it's, it's my meeting to run. Yeah, go ahead. No, no. I, of course, I'll, uh, I don't want to adjourn or, or take a recess. I'm just, we'll just pause. We can move right on. We can move. It. The next issue is there's nothing it, going on. Sam, let's yeah, we get going. Yeah, the, the historical uh, document preservation grant is just the normal. Okay. Paul probably enjoy the opportunity to let you run it. For a probably not. I think he told me to wait. No, right. he'll come back. Right? You're looking at the what? The Samuel Smith House, right? Right. Yeah. Well, no, we're doing the, the historical. The clerk historic documents. Mm -hmm. the grant yeah, okay. I'll the, put the motion the on the floor. Move okay. the following. Resolve that Paul and Formica, first selectman of the town of East Lyme, is empowered to execute and deliver in the name and on behalf of this municipality a contract with the Connecticut State Library for an historic documents preservation grant. I will second the motion. We have a motion that's been seconded. Any further comment? This is something that uh, has We've been applied for, for for the past several years and been granted. Um, been used very successfully for updating our documents in the town clerk's office. Uh, in some cases, uh, restoration of the, the documents that are in poor condition, and in some cases, uh, putting them onto uh, more contemporary into a more contemporary digital format. Any further comment? I think Roseanne said it all. Indeed. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? We pass 5 0. And uh, Mr. Formica returns. Sir, we, uh, we went through 2B already, so you're at 2C. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next item then would be the Samuel Smith House discussion. I put uh, the motion on the floor. Resolved to request the historical. Historic Properties Commission to conduct a study and submit a report to the Department of Economic and Community Development, the Planning Commission, the Zoning Commission, and the First Selectman regarding the proposed designation of the Samuel Smith House as a historic property and to hold a public hearing thereon, all pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes, Section 7-147, page at 7 sequential. Yeah, yep. sequential. Uh -huh. Second. second. Oh, I'm going to give it to Rob. All right, motion has been made and seconded. So discussion on this item um, has to do with what we're going to do and how we're going to place the Samuel Smith House as a historic property. And the, the motion that was just made um, is, is requesting the Historic Properties Commission to conduct the study and, and kind of take on the, uh, the Samuel Smith House under under their auspices. Uh, Attorney O'Connell is here, oh, O'Connell, Collins is here um, to talk a little bit about this. And I think we have uh, some choices involved and, and uh, let me just get to where I am at here. This Come on up. Solution. You wish to begin? Uh, you've done a lot of research on this. We have uh, we have an easement that the historic uh, the state of Connecticut Historic Preservation Group uh, has put on the property. We are, as a community, uh, responsible for applying that easement. Correct. And the getting sound someone the to uh, and not enforce. I guess, is enforce the right word? The easement well, or to the, the easement itself has certain obli affirmative obligations, such as the the Samuel Smith House has to be open 12 times a year to the public, and notice has to be published in the newspaper. But also, the town has affirmative obligations of protecting it from development and making sure that changes aren't made to the house unless the state of Connecticut is notified first and agrees. 
So the resolution that was made was one of the options that we have? Yes. Uh, basically, the Board of Selectmen has two options. One is to turn it over to the Historic Commission for a study. The Historic Commission has been set up in East Lyme by an ordinance. There are cur currently two properties within, uh, under the auspices of the Historic Properties Commission, the Thomas Lee House and the Little Boston Schoolhouse, which includes the Lee House Barn. So one of your options is to recommend that the Historic Properties Commission conduct a study whether or not to add the Samuel Smith House to the Historic Properties Commission. As part of that study, they would have to recommend that the Board of Selectmen amend the ordinance to add the Samuel Smith House. So the Historical Properties Committee was, was set up. We, we've become a certified local government uh, for the purposes of, of trying to oversee uh, a, a, and, and keep track of and support a number of historic uh, properties within the community of which uh, we're even compiling a list currently so that we have identified where they are. Uh, the reason for that, uh, so that we don't have issues such as the Tinker House come up where developers have a plan and they don't really know or understand the value. So now that they'll be, they'll be managed. So, um, but the Historic Properties Commission was set by ordinance and uh, now that if they want to add any of these other historic properties on the list, Samuel Smith being one, Smith Harris perhaps another, Tinker House as I mentioned, that would each require a study by the Historic Properties Commission and an ordinance change. That's the way the statute uh, has been written for the state of Connecticut. Is that the correct? statute is very technical and uh, involved in certain processes. There has to be a public hearing. They have to report back to the first selectman, the DECD. Uh, so it is a very technical statute, but you have to comply with it in order to designate a property as historic property in accordance with the state rules. Okay. And this seems to be to fit into the, the reasons why we established the Historic Properties Commission. This is why we want this forward. The, the Historic Properties Commission is made up of a number of folks. I believe there's six people on the commission. Is that correct? Five people. Um, and would those five people be the ones to conduct the study, or would they get to appoint those folks to make a study, or how? They would, uh, the study committee was <coughs> formed at the time the earlier ordinance was, went into effect. So technically, the commission would re, the study commission would be brought back, and it would be up to the Historic Properties Commission to appoint a study committee. Okay. And it within to, itself would have to be the same people if not available then they would appoint someone to fill out the number right? correct it's up to the Commission okay. itself to appoint the okay. committee and then they would they would come back to the Board of Selectmen and we would hold the public hearing or the Historic Properties Commission would hold the public hearing all of those well, really only the Board of Selectmen can conduct a public hearing okay, okay. so would the point of the public hearing be to solicit public comment on whether or not this house should be added to the Historic Properties Commission? Yes. And whether we should go ahead and amend the ordinance to allow the addition of this property? Yes. And, and well, no. Uh, no. The, the purpose of the public hearing is so that the Historic Properties Commission can present to the public and to the Board of Selectmen their recommendations. And their recommendations would be uh, whether to add the Samuel Smith House and whether to amend the ordinance. It would be up to you whether or not to amend your ordinance to add it. So it's conceivable the Historic Properties Commission could come back and say we don't want this added? Yes. In which case, uh, how does that affect our obligations with regard to the easement and all those very technical issues you discussed with regard to the property as it stands in the town. Yes, that's why uh, when Mr. Formica opened up, he said you have two options of what to do with the property. So the first option that's been presented to you is to ask the Historic Properties Commission to conduct a study and make it part of the commission and amend the ordinance. Your second option is the town, under the easement itself, has the right 
to delegate the oversight of the Samuel Smith House to a land trust or to a charitable organization. The Samuel Smith House is a corporation right now, but it hasn't been designated a charitable corporation. It's my understanding that they are applying for charitable status, but have not received it yet. So the other option would be to ask the Samuel Smith House, the Friends of Samuel Friends. Smith, to become a charitable organization, and you can assign the obligations under the easement to them. So that when they got their 501c3 status, they could then be responsible for taking care of these technical details? Correct. Uh, the third option <coughs> is, could be a combination of those two, in which case the Historic Properties Commission, and I could be wrong here, but this is my interpretation, the Historic Properties Commission could in fact have their study and let's say for the purposes of discussion they accept the house and the ordinance gets changed and everything moves on, there still could be developed a nonprofit friends of Samuel Smith who would be able to over to be able to oversee some of the, the mechanics of operating the house, providing the tours of the house. Could could that possibly be part that would work uh, under the auspices or in conjunction with the Historic Properties Commission? Would that be once the Historic Properties Commission it recommends that the house become part of the commission and the ordinance is passed, they can delegate responsibilities to the Friends of Samuel Smith, provided they're a charitable organization. Right. So okay. the answer is yes, but they wouldn't really be working okay. together. Yeah. Okay. The so commission would still be mainly responsible, but it could delegate duties directly to the Friends of Samuel so, Smith. So the day-to-day -day functioning could fall to the Friends, and then the oversight and the making sure that the easement uh, adherence uh, would fall under the Historic Properties Commission. And as each new property comes before us, uh, they could choose to add or not, and the Historic Properties Commission then would, would kind of be the umbrella organization over any number of these Friends of uh, museums. That's correct. And, and if there were a dispute between the Friends of Samuel Smith and the Historic Properties Commission, the, the Historic Properties Commission would control any decisions. Yeah. All right. This is where I'm going. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Am I wrong here thinking that all of a sudden we now have three pieces of the pie? We have Samuel Smith, we've got the Lee House, in those, those buildings. And then we have Society Road. Smith Harris. The Smith Harris. How can the, how can the Historic Properties Commission not accept this house because it's a historic house? I just don't understand it. I, it's beyond anything I can imagine. How can they say no and not accept this house into, uh, under, under the commission? It, it doesn't make any sense to me. And if not, we just abandon that whole commission and we move on and we get somebody that wants to be a player for all of these commission, all of these houses. I, I just don't understand how we can, we can keep doing all of this and keep funding things out of, they should all be playing the same game. Well, I think, I think what we're doing is beginning that process. So that well, I, I, what bothers me the most is, is that we're, what we're saying here is, is that uh, the friends will get their 5013C. I'm sure they will, and I, I understand that they're well on their way to doing that. So we're all playing against each other instead of playing for each other. I don't, I don't deal with I, that. No, I don't, I, I don't agree. I, I think this is how I interpret it, and perhaps I'll get some help from Ms. Hardy, is that uh, we have uh, uh, the Samuel Smith House. We have the Smith-Harris House, for example, uh, uh, Which is a commission on its Smith own. Smith-Harris Commission, but yeah. supported by the Friends of the Smith-Harris. They support, just as the library has the Friends of the Library, and the Library Board supports that. I think this is kind of the same thing. We get the Historic Properties Commission. Hopefully they will all vote to bring this in. Uh, uh, to I the, would hope to the so. I, thing. And then the day-to-day then the, the -day activities and support would be uh, fall to the friends. the friends of Samuel Smith. So it's not that they're working against or around each other but they would, it they just would sounds to me that we're we're the fact that there there's a yay or nay and i hope it would be yay well that's a state statute that we have you to know require I, I understand yeah. that but I, all i'm it. saying is so. is that 
you know, we worked so hard to end up getting this spot that why would we, why would we be pushing ourselves against each other? I don't understand that part of it. But anyway, maybe that's not going to happen. I hope not. Ms. Hardy, I'm sorry. I jumped in. You were going to say something. Uh, I would like to hear uh, from Ms. Lang, who had began the, who chaired the uh, chair, district. She's the current chair. Mm -hmm. And was really with the commission, that commission from the beginning. And uh, I'd also like to hear from someone from Samuel Smith. And then we would have an idea as to where we're standing here. All right, with the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we have multiple members in the community, and I know that Luang is here. And if you would like to come up and share your thoughts and see if I have misspoken or if. Thank you. When the Historic uh, Properties Commission was formed, it is under state statute. And I'm, I thank you, John, for bringing this extra copy with you. And each time a historic property comes up, whether it's one of the towns or a ind private individual, they can come to the Historic Properties Commission, and it is our job to help them move forward through the identification and the approval of its property as a historic property. And the difference with, with this is that the Samuel Smith House, for example, is on the National Register. So any of the paperwork that went with that goes through the system. When the uh, original study committee was formed for the, uh, it was to be with the Lee House and the Smith Harris House to identify those as historic properties. And at the time, there was a study committee, there were five people on it. And we went through the process. And eventually, Smith Harris did step aside because we couldn't find uh, exactly the boundaries that would fit within what the state required at the time. So the Lee House went ahead by itself. And so now the difference is, and why this is important to some historic properties or those that you really believe in, is that this designation prepares it, protects it in perpetuity. The National Register and the State Register are a wonderful honor, but they don't protect it from the last final status of being demolished. So uh, as long as there's paperwork and anyone who came forward could bring their own paperwork with them, National Register documents, any kind of historical documents, any kind of family documents, anything. And there are criteria that the Historic Properties Commission has been putting together as we go through the 206 houses that are now on the inventory that has just been completed. So the concern that, that it would turn down something that's a viable historic property seems negligible. I mean, it, it, it doesn't happen. The other thing is the cost of this, which has been raised, is this is something else that, that we're thankful to our, our friend from Waterford, that the CLG money can be used to help uh, defray the, the costs of a public hearing or p publishing a public ordinance. Because again, we, got, we have the grant this time to do the historic properties inventory. It will be done within the next two months. It's virtually done now, but the, all the other stuff to put it into hard copy and flash drives and all stuff has to be done yet. But when that grant's over, next year we're eligible to apply for another $2,700 grant. And that is no match. It's just because we are a CLG. So if you want to know why we're a CLG, this is one of the examples as to why it has benefits to the community. I don't know if that answers enough of your questions. Um, I'd like to, um, through you, ask um, if um, what uh, they envision the study accomplishing. And the study, how do you envision the study uh, moving forward, and what do you believe it will co accomplish? The last time we, we approached, because we were all brand new at this, and, and it required uh, an appointment of a study committee by the uh, Board of Selectmen. And we went around and suggested, found names and suggested it. I don't know. You said that the Historic Properties Commission should appoint the committee. But I would imagine it would be the same way. Again, on the committee right now are people who were on the original study committee. So each time there is a new house being proposed, there, is, there has to be a study committee. Now, when all the paperwork is already there, it doesn't take very long. And actually, Norm Peck, <laughs> the elder, is the one who chaired the original Historic Properties Study Committee that helped form the Historic Properties Commission. So you expect the process to be the same, if not? Yes, and, and it, it, it needn't, because we've been through it once, it doesn't need to be 
it doesn't seem it doesn't seem complicated to us. Yeah. Okay, good. If I may, sure. uh, yep. Ms. Lang is correct that the study committee needs to be resurrected. It was disbanded once the prior committee finished its study, but that's what you're voting on tonight, to tell the Historic Properties Commission to resurrect a study committee. A study committee, not the same one. No, a study committee. Could a be the same one if people so choose, but it could be people more familiar with this particular property. Right. There's or one thing I didn't mention, and it's important. If the Historic Property Commission comes back and makes a recommendation the Board of Selectmen, as the owner of the property, not because you're the Board of Selectmen, but because under the statute you're the owner of the property, you have the right. So if they come back and said, we don't think the Friends of Samuel Smith should be part of the Historic Properties Commission. Or the Samuel Smith House. Samuel Smith House, I'm sorry. You can reject their report as the owner of the property. Okay. So okay. you do have the ultimate authority as the owner of the property if they decide not to add it to the Historic Properties Commission to reject their report. So it's wonderful that the state statutes are <laughs> designed and written in such a way that we can walk and talk ourselves in a complete circle and from the very beginning to the very end. That's what's tricky is the statute doesn't <laughs> really what, com right. contemplate the town being an owner of the property. Mm -hmm. They contemplate this happening to a private right. owner. I always wanted to own land on Plantstam Road. <laughs> I guess we all okay. got it. Is that Beautiful. So when you this, the, sorry, the study commission comes back and they say we have found that this is in fact a historic property and these are our recommendations, is that it's, it's, what the report not, is? I don't think it's report finding it, it is a historic property because we know that it is. It already it's is whether done. Whether they want to yeah. take it under the umbrella of the historic properties commission. That's, that's, so that's the, the study committee is do we want to take this under our auspices or not? Yes. Correct. And this is why we set this up in the first place, so we hope that the answer okay. is we already know. But okay. I did consult with the state because I thought the, the property has always already been designated by the state as historic because that's how we were able to get the grant yeah. money. That's my point. So and it doesn't uh, make sense. You can't have it both we, ways. Well, um, the, the state advised me um, that we do have to go through this process. <laughs> okay, right. well, right. which is fine. I just hope everybody's on the same page. Members so. of the Friends of Smith, of Samuel Smith, I know Marvin is a member. Is there anyone else who would like to come up and speak to this item while we're on the subject, sir? Did you have a particular question, or just do you want to hear anything? Yeah, okay. Thank Good you. evening. Um, John O'Neill. Uh, John, pull, just, just pull that up, so because you're really tall. Sure. Right here. Thank you. Better? All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, John O'Neill, uh, Vice President of the East Lyme Historic uh, Society, and since uh, 2000, somewhere thereabouts, the Chairperson of the Waterford Historic Properties Commission. Uh, we have been through this several times, a couple of times recently. Yes, it does seem like we're chasing our tails from time to time doing this over and over again. Um, it's very similar to what had to happen to establish the East Lyme Historic Properties Commission. It's virtually the same process with each additional pr property that is added to the auspices of that commission. It's just a little more streamlined, a little bit easier each time, and with a property that's already on the National Register, it's just that much easier because the documentation is already there. In the case of the Samuel Smith House, as it has just gone through uh, uh, a sale, more of that uh, information is there. The, uh, in Section B of the, uh, the State Ordinance, the Historic Study Committee shall investigate and submit a report which shall include the following an analysis of the historical significance and architectural merit of the buildings, general description of the area to be included, a map showing the exact boundaries to be included within the district or districts. That was the problem we had with the, uh, the, the Smith, -Harris. Smith Harris House. Thank you. Um, a proposed ordinance or ordinances designed to create and provide for the operation of the historic, they used the word district, property, um, and any other such matters. So it's just a couple of 
technical things. This is the property. This is what it looks like. This is how old it is. These are its boundaries. And these are a couple of ground rules that the commission is going to be looking after. Um, properties that we have done this with in Waterford include, uh, most recently, the Nevins Cottage, site of the Waterford <coughs> Library on the, the Jordan Commons area, which operates under the auspices uh, once of the Waterford Historical Society. It is actually owned by the town, but rented out by the Historical Society. We have, as the Waterford Historic Properties Commission, we have jurisdiction over it to say that it must be maintained. That's, that's our job, to make sure that the roof does, isn't falling apart, to make sure that it meets building code, these are the things that we can enforce as the Historic Properties Commission because it is a historic property that is under our auspices. Uh, we have the same situation with the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center. That obviously, we don't tell them what they can and cannot do on the property. We simply have jurisdiction over what they can do to the property. They can't paint all the buildings black. They can't alter it in any way which would um, detract from its historical significance. That's basically all we have to do with it. We have that oversight, but by having that oversight, we can funnel some money to them. We can arrange for various studies, um, for potential improvements and things like that to be done. And we are also uh, a guarantor for the town that as they go through renovations, they're talking about a large, um, uh, uh, an enlargement of the, the property and its buildings, that those things will be done in such a way that we'll be keeping in the historical, you know, the boundaries of the, the, the property, the, the historical aesthetics of the property. We're just there to guarantee that sort of a thing, which is what I see as a similar role for the East Lyme Historic Properties Commission in uh, so far as the Samuel Smith House needs an oversight, an overseer, for the purposes of its easement. Um, that that would be the only thing. It would just be you know a couple of lines of um, um, I'm, I'm losing my verbiage here, but but just a couple of lines of text, ordinance, and a couple of uh, housekeeping items. The property's this big. It's that old. That's all the study really needs to to entail. Okay, that's about it. Thank you very much. Certainly. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Anyone else? That good. Are we good for this? So, in this motion, we're basically approving a study for them to inform us and come back to us with that information, and then we can decide from there what the next step is. Submit a report to the Department of Economic <coughs> and Community Development. That must be the state, the Planning Commission here, the Zoning Commission first selectman regarding the proposed designation of Samuel Smith House as historic property, and to hold it here. Till all those, and that's what we're doing, then we'll come back and revisit it again. Right? Yep. Further questions or comments? Call mm -hmm. motion. We are resolved and seconded, is that correct? Uh, yep. Hearing no more discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you very much to all of you. Um, the next item is the item we added 2D. Uh, it is the Regarding uh, a situation that occurred at 18 Hill Road, uh, this uh, you have a memo, I believe, in front of you or in your packet regarding the fact that the uh, septic system on this property uh, failed and there is no available land on the property to replace it. Uh, it is also a danger to the neighboring well, which is uh, approximately 30